And speaking, of course, about last season, as we now welcome in Frank LaBeouf to the show as well. But, Craig, I want to start with you, and I want to remind you that he played under Antonio Conte, yet he's admitting that he's been in touch with Inzaghi all of last season. Yeah, I mean, I would be interested to know just how early he was in touch with him, but no surprise that his commitment to Chelsea was minimal. Uh, no surprise that we know that he wants to go back and has got his wish short term. Uh, and I think it's just further proof for Chelsea supporters or the Chelsea hierarchy, the, the manager, that his heart was never in it. And, you know, when you're at such a high pressured club in an elite league like the Premier League, and you're brought in as the guy who, at that point, they thought was going to potentially make the difference and a pretty solid unit at the time. And Chelsea were a pretty solid unit at that point. And he was going to be the guy to be repeating his form of, of, of the two or three years he had in Milan. And then you're calling up a manager of your former club. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just dire in terms of commitment, isn't it, for any player, never mind one who's been brought in for such a huge fee. You wonder if it's a bit silly as well, Frank, because there's no option to buy here, no obligation clause. It was 100 million that Chelsea paid for him. He might have to go back there, and yet already he's saying that he's been in touch with Inzaghi last season. That's what I'm concerned about, you know. I, I, I would be lying if I would say that I'm happy for him to see him happy at Inter because uh, we have to read between the lines. What does he mean when he say that? He's uh, going one year uh, uh, in advance where, as you said, the, the, the board will have to wonder at Chelsea, they will have to wonder, you know, what's going to happen to him and what we're going to do with that guy who would pay $113 million to come over. He's clearly saying that he wasn't happy at Chelsea. He is also saying, I don't want to go back. So that's going to be a main concern. It's, a, it's kind of a tactic. He's maybe working for Inter, saying, I don't want to go back, so I'm going to make sure Chelsea lower the price. Otherwise, you won't be able to buy me, even if you're saying there is no uh, and, uh, guarantee that he's going, to be, he's going to be gone to Inter next season and, and, and Inter is going to buy him. But that's a possibility. I think we have to read between the lines and saying that he's already working for Inter to buy him next season. Well, we're going to take a look at some more of the uh, parts from the Sky Italia interview, Romelu Lukaku, on his return to Inter. He said, I've always said that I have Inter in my heart. I know I will return to Inter. I really hope from the bottom of my heart to return to Inter, not at the end of my career, but when I'm still at top level, to win more together. Sorry, this was actually the interview that he did when he was mm. still at Chelsea. Christmas time, yeah. Christmas. Time, yeah. So obviously this has all been at least bubbling since then, Shaka. Yeah, I, I remember when that interview came out, I was one of the few people in this panel to try to defend Romelu Lukaku. If what he's seeing now about being in touch with it with Inzaghi is even remotely true, if there's any shred of truth to it, then I sat here and was trying to defend the indefensible. Because I do not understand how how you, you make those comments in December. I don't understand how you make the, the, these comments, these follow-up comments now in, in June. Romelu Lukaku has to understand the implication of what he's seeing. He, what the, 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 the bigger picture to this is not lost on him. So I, I am really struggling to, to, to figure out what the angle is here, because it makes absolutely no sense unless he knows right now that come the end of his, his loan, Inter will pay whatever they need to, to pay to, to bring him back, that he's played his last bit of football for, for Chelsea. I, I don't think he can make that call, not, not in June of, of 2022. Um, so for me, it, it's just, it, it's, it's confusing and disappointing. I can go back to the, the chat we had that, uh, around this period. You can say these things are rather silly and needless. You can say them. But if Shaka Hislop or myself say, I want to leave Celtic or Newcastle, I want to go back to London, and you make that public, you want to go back and play in London, you better make sure you're keeping clean sheets. Mm -hmm. You better make sure you're playing well. You better make sure you can handle the pressure. He couldn't do it. He gave the interview, he couldn't handle the pressure. He, he, he hid. Uh, he played in games where he never showed up. He never showed for the ball. He was not playing very much, but when he did, he was, was uh, anonymous in the most. Scored a couple of goals at the end of the season. And go back to Frank's point about going back. Chelsea don't want him back. 
he can score. I mean, they might have to have him back. They don't want him back. He could go to Inter Milan and score 35 goals on loan. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give a stuff. They don't want him back because he's not been able to cut the mustard under the pressure of the Premier League's lights. Uh, so that, that's his bed. He's, he's made it. He can lie on it. Uh, and it seems for everybody who tells me he's such a... Uh, and he might, he might be an articulate, well-thought, well-spoken, speak several languages, I don't care. Just because you speak several languages doesn't mean you're a bright chappy. You don't it's have to say these things, you know what I mean? You can keep some things concealed. And I think this is just irking again to, to people that put a lot of time and effort in to try and make him the number one player at Chelsea. It, it makes such little sense, and I know you you were with me in this, thinking that Thomas Tuchel maybe could have handled it a little bit better in terms of the yeah, fallout yeah. Around, around the interview. But again, if there's any shred of truth to that Romelu Lukaku is in touch with Nzaghi all season long, even before this, this December interview, then I owe Thomas Tuchel an apology. Because oh, you I, get, get to London. Go I, on, well, over. I, you, yeah, I, I do. Steve, I want to go back to London. Steve, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> apology. Steve, Sorry, Steve's applauding money, and you're going to give him an apology. There'll be nobody left here. It's, it's just no. But to, to, in all seriousness, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous for Romelu Lukaku to make that statement. I honestly do not know how he benefits from this. Just don't make the sorry on Twitter, because Craig might unfollow you. He hates all those apologies oh, on Twitter. Well, there's, there's, if, he, if he says that's... sorry publicly on Twitter... Well, I hate oh. most things on Twitter. I'll be honest with you, I hate most, I most things on Twitter. I put on a mentry. What I, 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 I put I, on a shack mentry. I open my, yeah, my Twitter but... most days to read the news and I go, sickle fan, sickle fan, sickle fan, sickle... Oh, God. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.